Hey everyone. Today we're going to talk about a bit of a thought bubble. This one's still kind of in the build phase, um, but really just a bit of a mindset shift around um, finance and running organisations and I guess the more, more towards the way that we start to make these decisions, right? So I want to share with you this idea of high context and low context languages. So bear with me for a moment here. Uh, high context language. No, let's start with low context. <laughs> English is an example of a low context language. And that means that if you were to see the words written down, that you are able to interpret most of the meaning through reading those words. That you can get the meaning from the words on the paper. High context language, conversely, um, Japanese and French as examples, if you see the words written down, you don't necessarily understand the full meaning until you have that picture of the cultural context that goes around the language and the words. And so embedded in the words written down on paper is a whole bunch of meaning making and cultural reference that you need to understand to actually understand what is being put out there, what is being said. And I think the same goes for business. If we look at the language of finance in business, we have done everything that we can to strip the context from the language of finance and business. We have profit and loss sheets. We have balance sheets. We have these standardized documents and tools that enable us to compare apples with apples, one organization to another. We have a standardized view of a standardized language of business by which we can start to make comparisons and associations and understand performance and all of these things. It's very low context. You read the numbers and there is a system to understand those numbers. Now, conversely, I think that losing that context has done us a whole lot of damage. And so what I believe part of our work to do as transformational architects, as change agents, as world changers, is to bring that context back into our decision making, back into our organisations. Because finance is absolutely one part of the puzzle. And I'm not saying throw those tools out. But we must start to build context into our businesses. I think it's a large part of the reason why our decision making processes are failing. Because we're trying to strip everything back to this really low context. And that means that we end up focusing on the wrong things. You've heard me talk about what measures gets, um, gets done and the weirdness that can come out of setting a measure that we think, yep, customer satisfaction, that'll work. Whereas in actual fact, there's all of this hocus pocus that ends up going on every year when we come to that point where we have to hit a number People will do everything they can to work around that. Exclude this piece, include that piece, yada, yada. And coaching on surveys, all of those things to make sure that we hit that customer satisfaction number across the business. And so I, I truly believe that a large part of that is due to the fact that we keep trying to strip back to this low context rather than appreciating and building in that context into what we're measuring, what we're seeing, how we're judging our success as a business. Now, don't get me wrong. This is super uncomfortable. When I talk to executives about you need to measure did you deliver what mattered to customers, I will get all sorts of blank stares, sometimes temper tantrums, because that's not quantitative. It's, you know, it's too fuzzy. You want me to start measuring smiley faces now? So don't get me wrong, this, is, this stuff is not easy. It's relatively simple and straightforward, but it's kind of hard to do as well. However, I don't think that that detracts from the real need to make sure that we build that context in because if we're not building that context in then we've not got the full view of what's going on to make those decisions and any of you I'm sure would agree that if you're looking purely at the numbers that's not the totality of the information that you want to make investment decisions even when the purpose is to make sure that you are building a return on investment through sustained customer engagement more purchases, more revenue, cost reduction, whatever it is. There's, there's a financial outcome that comes with that, but it's not the reason, it's not the only reason that we're doing that. And so how do we start to build in context 
into our decision making. I also firmly believe it's part of the rise of post-it note walls. <laughs> Those of you that have worked with me will know that the, all the colours, all the, uh, try and systematise it, but like all the colours on a giant wall, favourite place to go. But I, I, again, I believe that part of that is this innate knowingness that we can no longer account for our decisions and our, our and explain our problems in these two-dimensional circles and rectangles or um, you know two-dimensional numbers on paper. There's actually this element of it needs to be tangible. We need to pull these descriptions of problems in business into the third dimension and that part of the post-it note on the wall and the the movement that goes along with moving work through a Kanban board that's that's presented on the wall, part of the arranging of those visual tools is on some level, I think we're starting to acknowledge that our world is super complex and chaotic. The problems that we're facing today are not simple and straightforward anymore. They are also complex and chaotic. And that we, start, we need to get into this third dimension. We need to get into the context so that we can bring all of that to our decision making. Now that's not to say that we want all of the detail about everything all of the time. Too much detail absolutely creates noise as well. But we do definitely need more than what we've considered so far. We need that richness of data. Um, to give you another example, I don't want to hear that you are building an entire um, solution, technical solution to a problem that is anchored around we have too many tech support calls. Our customer service uh, is it, costs are too high. There's too many calls coming into our environment that are that are customer service and tech support based. So we need to make sure that we improve the product so we get fewer tech support calls. No, I want to see that context of what a customer is actually asking for, because that richness of the context is what helps us to understand: Are we actually implementing a solution? that's going to have the impact that we want, that's going to have the right impact for our customers where they'll actually notice a difference at the end of it. Because Lordy knows we've all done a whole bunch of work and a whole bunch of projects where customers wouldn't even know that you'd spent the money. So that's what I wanted to drop on you today, this idea of high and low context. Keep an eye out for it. When you are presented with decision-making documentation, in that effort to simplify the message, have we stripped away too much of the context and missed the opportunity for understanding the richness of data that might drive us to actually get to the root cause of the problem? Start to bring that into your financial processes and your decision making. And it can be as simple as, rather than documenting a whole bunch of requirements and design solution based on research and customer data that we've gathered through various Gartner reports, Actually, we went out and spoke to customers, and here's what they said. It can be as simple as that. But take every opportunity to build that context in, because it will give you a wider worldview, it will give you a better insight, and it will help you to start to make better decisions as a result. Because none of us can argue that we want less information. We always want more of that context. We always want that bigger picture when we're making decisions. And so building that richness in, take those small opportunities. Add a little bit here and there start to build it into your process. So that's what I wanted to drop on you today. I would love to hear from you. Please drop me a comment below. And I uh, hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you again real soon.